welcome to the third risk os programming tutorial um brilliant so last tutorial we made a video we sorry we made a program i made a video we made a program that just printed hello world on the screen and now i'm going to show you some c fundamental stuff that you're going to really need to know if we're going to start to make stuff with buttons and text and windows and all that fun stuff so <coughs> let's get started let's get going first thing you need to know about are variables variables are places where you can store information that can change it can vary and this information could be an integer um, it could be a number with a decimal point it could be text um, lots of different things um, so let's get started so that is how you index semicolon that is how you declare an integer so uh, told it what it is it's an integer given a name x now we could set that equal to something five for example um yeah it's not that difficult is it that's it we've made a variable called x and set it equal to five now we want to put the, we could put the five onto the screen so we're going to go print f just like in the last one and we're going to go x is equal to now this is when it changed slightly if you put um a percentage sign and then i the integer this is a placeholder this means that we're going to take that percentage i take it out and we're going to stick a variable there so let's give it x so that's going to replace i with x lovely so i'm going to save that we're going to go and we're going to compile it just like in the last tutorial um well that's so assuming i haven't made any mistakes which is unlikely i normally make quite a few mistakes oh no there we go lovely so let's have a look there we go exactly oh, sorry exactly what i thought x is equal to five so i'm going to click the mouse and it's going to disappear now we can we can change x i'm going to go down here i'm going to say x is equal to six then i'm going to um copy that line so now these two lines are exactly the same it's printing out x but now it's going to have a new value because it's gone down changed to six then it's going to print the new value so let's save that it's gcc dash a out hello world dot c so we're going to compile that I'm going to run that. Here we go. It says x is equal to five, x is equal to six. Now you'll notice that there's no new line in the in the text. Um, we can add that in really easily. If we go into our brackets and we put a slash n. Now in the standard I/O library, that is an escape character, which means the character that follows it is not going to be put on the screen. It does something. In this case, n is for new line. We're going to do the same here. So if we um, I'm going to copy that, we use that again. Let's save that. Um, GCC dash o out hello world dot c. Yeah, you're going to type that a lot this tutorial if you're doing everything I do. Um, I suggest actually you just watch it and then have a little play. Um, try some stuff out yourself afterwards. Can you see x equal to five, x equal to six? Lovely. Now we can do maths with this. On the next line, we're going to go x equals um, 3 plus 5. Um, so 3 plus 5, 8. x should now be 8. So let's, um, let's stick that out. Let's see if that works. Um, So, you can skip this tutorial if you already know how to program because this will be mind numbingly boring. There we go, x is equal to 8, lovely. So, the maths is working. We could also, um, we can also use other variables in this maths. So, I could say x is equal to 3 plus x. Now, any of you that 
no maps we'll realize that that is actually impossible but um yeah what it does is it works out this first and then sets it equal to it so x is six uh, so it's gonna this side will be equal to nine so it's gonna set x equal to nine um check if that works um blink <coughs> so Wait for that to finish compiling. X is equal to nine at the bottom, lovely. Now, what I could do is I could add a new variable. I could add in, um, I could add in a float. Now then, a float is um, a number with a decimal point. So I'm gonna go 7.5, uh, oh, no, give it a name, float, uh, thread. Thread's a good name for a float. And we're going to set Fred equal to 7.5. And now we're going to do um, printf um, Fred is equal to. And now we're going to do percentage F because it's a float. Uh, then we're going to pass Fred in. So then. Now then, save that. Save dash o out hello world. Dot c. And we can have a new line at the bottom that says Fred is equal to 7.5, hopefully, if all goes to plan. There we go. Fred is equal to 7.5000007.5. Brilliant. Now, then, this is when things get interesting. You see, we've specified that that's x is an integer. We specified that Fred is a float. What happens if we try and mix them? So now we're going to go x equals x plus Fred. So you're kind of hoping that what is x equal to at this point? x is equal to 9, if you want 9, plus 7.5. You're, you're really hoping that you're going to get 16.5 as an answer. Let's have a look. Now, this should come out of an error. Um, oh, it hasn't. Wow, let's see what happens. Huh? Oh, I forgot to print. <laughs> I forgot to print X. Let's just do that quickly. Um, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Blink. That surprised me. I thought it would come out with an error. Um, well, let's have a look. So, ah, you see, x is equal to 16, not 16.5. Why is it 16? It's because we said that x is equal, is an integer. It's equal to an integer. And on this side, it's gone, well, x is an integer, threads are float, but it's turning it into an integer or what do I do what do I do and it's you know it's an integer so it's going to take away that 0.5 it doesn't round it if I did 7.9 to Fred it's still going to say 16 um, still going to say 16 um, it just takes away that decimal point it doesn't round There, still saying 16. Lovely. So, um, next, I guess it's time to do functions. So, functions are bits of code that we can use over and over and over again. And um, yeah, we're going to make a really silly, silly function. It turns an integer and it's going to be called add. What it's going to do um, is it's going to take in two integers. Oop, int x int y and what it's going to do is it's going to take the first integer x and it's going to add it to the y and we're going to we want to set the whole function equal to that so what we do is we type return in front of that return and a statement i could say 
int answer equals that. Oh, I forgot the semicolon, I'm sorry. And then return answer, that's exactly the same. Um, in fact, we'll do it like that. It's neater. Um, so it has inputs, these two inputs. Then uh, it has some code in between these brackets. And then we set answer equal to x plus y, and then we return the answer. And what we're going to do is in here, we're going to print f. I'm going to type um, 10 plus 13 is equal to, then we're going to have our integer placeholder. And we're going to set that placeholder. We're going to put in that placeholder's place, add, and then x and y. So it was 10 and 13. So you you list the you list the um, arguments with commas in between. Um, save this. Um, GCC show out hello world dot c. So um, if you have any mistakes, oh, apparently not. Lovely. So if we run this, see what it says. 10 plus 13 is equal to 23. Brilliant, that's exactly what we wanted. Um, so that's functions and that's variables. Now, finally, um, which I didn't know about finally, depends how much time, I mean, how long is this taking? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll go on to pointers. Now, pointers are supposedly terrifying, but I, I really think they're not. They're nowhere near as bad as people seem to think they are. Pointers are really fine. Uh, pointers in C are variables that point to other variables or functions or anything. It doesn't really matter. It just points to something. It does what it says on the tin, pointer. And that is the pointer symbol. Um, so let's get started. We're going to make an integer. We're going to call it, um, whoa, we're going to call it 10. We're going to set an equal to 5. So our integer for 10 is equal to now we're going to make a pointer so first of all we have to specify what type of variable it's pointing to integer then we're going to use the pointer sign and then we're going to call it um meg and then we're gonna we're gonna set meg equal to the address of ted right so i guess this is where the confusion could come from all a pointer does is it stores a memory address. That's like a postcode to your computer. Um, it tells the computer where things are. And in this case, we're pointing, it's where um, we're setting the pointer, the address equal to the address of another variable. That's what that means, the address of Ted. So the pointer called Meg is equal to the address of Ted. So now Meg always points to Ted. And um, let's see that happen. Let's see that happen. So we're going to print now um, Ted equals integer and is stored at address P. So this P placeholder is just for memory. It's a mem memory address. Um, lovely. Then we're going to go on a new line. Oh. New line, done. There we go. And on a new line, we're going to go Meg equals our P. P is the memory thing again because a pointer just stores a memory address of something and is stored at address. And then print f. Now print value as it's pointing to is i. Now then, let's link up all these placeholders. So the first placeholder is the value of Ted. So Ted. The second is the address of Ted. So that's the address of Ted. Lovely. Then here we want Meg, and then we want the address of Meg. 
And finally here, we want the value that Mega's pointed to. So for this, we have to do something called dereferencing the pointer. It's a silly name. It's just the value it's pointed to. Find the value it's pointing to. It's the pointer sign again. They're not very creative, the people who made C would appear. That's it. So what were you, what were you expecting? You're expecting Ted to equal five, and it is stored at, and then blah, 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 it'll be a memory address. Then we're going to have Meg is equal to blah, 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 a memory address. Um, in fact, these two memory addresses should be the same. Meg is pointing to Ted's memory address and is stored at the address, and then it will be another random memory address. And the value that Meg is pointing to should be five, because that's what Ted is. So let's compile this. I know what you're thinking. You probably understand pointers now. Um, but when you see them work, you'll understand them. Um, but you're probably thinking, what the hell is the point in that? And you'll see soon. There you go. Ted is equal to five and is stored at the address. Uh, then you've got a memory address. Meg is equal to, and look, you see that that and that are exactly the same. Um, and is stored at address, and then there's a different address there. And then the value of Meg, uh, is pointing so the value Meg is pointing to is five. Lovely, that's pointers done and dusted. Um, and to be honest, I, I wonder if that's it. Oh no, I guess there's something else. Last thing, final thing, final thing, and then you're good to go. Structs, structs, struct. So this is a structure. We can sort of make our own. Um, yeah, we can make our own types, like integer is a type, float was a type, the pointer sort of was like a type. Um, let's make our own ones, uh, a structure. We're going to call this structure book, book, books. And um, yeah, lovely. Let's, let's, add, let's add some content to this. So we're going to give it a member. So this is going to have a member called name. And it is going to be, oh, should I do that? No, we're going to have number. And it's an integer called number. Then we're going to have another integer called stars. So how much the book is rated out of, I guess. And um, there we have a structure. Let's use it. So we're going to go struct book. And we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it. Um, we're going to call it Tom. So we're going to create a book called Tom. Um, we're going to go Tom dot. Now this dot operator, um, it sort of goes into things. So we're going to say number is equal to five, and we're going to say Tom dot stars is equal to two. It's a really bad book. Not going to lie. I would never read Tom if I were you. Um, Finally, I'm going to print onto the screen um, uh, Tom is book number five, which is an integer, and is rated um, another integer out of five. And let's fill these placeholders. So we're going to have Tom number tom dot stars lovely so that should all work now um a couple of things you'll notice at the beginning of this i changed the tab stop at the bottom um you get to how it was how it was before is it would tab to the next sort of we tab to things in the line above every time we hit tab oops um sorry i accidentally hit f12 then um I change it to tab stops, so it just jumps three spaces when you hit tab. Um, now next, can you see that it went up to a new line? That annoys me. So if you click this 80, oh, right click, no, middle click this 80, you can set that to longest line, and it'll, um, it'll change that, really. It'll just change, it'll change how long the lines are, and it'll change it to the longest line you have, which is that line. Save that GCC dash O out hello world dot C. Lovely. 
so um see if i've made any mistakes i might have i don't use structs very often oh error so this is what an error looks like um lovely so i've spelt um i've i've ah, i put starts here so let me show you how um let me show you how Interesting. Not really what I wanted. Anyway, anyway, back to this. How um, how GCC shows you that you've got an error is uh, free service manager. Uh, it says an error. Struct book has no member starts. Now I put starts really, so I've just changed that to stars. Um, that was just a spelling error. Luckily, no programming errors. Um, so we'll just change that, save it, and we'll try again. I think I'm rambling on now. I might have to redo this tutorial. <laughs> I'm not sure how much sense it's making. Oh, we'll see. Right. See if I've made any more mistakes. It's possible. I'm not perfect. Oh, no. It's looking good. So, what we're expecting is for it to say Tom is book number uh, five and is rated two out of five. So, look. Tom is book number five and is rated two out of five. Lovely. So, I've just shown you structs now and to be honest i think pointers um structs variables functions that's all you really need to know to uh start making some stuff in c brilliant so next tutorial we're going to look at the mysteriousness that is the wimp which is windows icons menus and pointers i, I, don't, I don't actually know what it stands for something along those lines but we're going to get a multitasking app up um yeah it should be good so i'll see you then bye